In this video, I'm going to be color filling AR-15 engravings, and I'm going to be using Elmer's Painter's Pens, white and red, and then also going to use some Break Free CLP, and just a old t-shirt relegated to rag duty. Alright, so with these Painter Pens, I'm going to use a fairly traditional red and white for my safe and fire markings. You can use any color you can find these in. I just got these at Walmart. But you can probably find them at a craft store as well. And you're going to want to make sure that they are well shooken up. You can test it on a little piece of paper if you want to. So, how I do these is I'm going to go to the edges and I'm actually going to press in on the tip and I'm going to let some of that paint fill those markings itself. Hopefully you can see that fairly well. But if you notice, I'm actually not running the entire way. I'm just kind of letting the, the running of the paint do most of the work. You want to make sure that you get the inside edges as full as you want. And you're going to have a little bit on the edges, but not too much. Now one way if you want to be careful not to get color bleed from one color to another, you can do one at a time, let it actually dry. For ease of this video, I'm just going to go ahead and do both of them here together. Once again, I'm kind of letting the paint fill. Seems to me like the white one usually seems to have a little more difficulty filling. Alright, so now I've got both of them filled. I'll generally, even if I'm going to do both colors, I'm only going to do one side of the receiver at a time. Or at least I'm going to wait a while. What I like to do from this point is wait about 10 minutes to let the paint start drying before I clean up around the edges. This will make it a little easier to clean up the flats of the receiver without pulling the paint out from the markings. So we're going to go ahead and give it about 10 minutes and then we'll come back to it and clean it up. Alright, so our 10 minutes is up and I've soaked a rag with some break free. Now we're going to start rubbing the flats to get some of the paint off. Now this is where you're going to need a little bit of elbow grease. And you're going to see pretty quickly the, how quickly it comes off. Now, in this case you can see there's actually a couple places where I'm pulling the paint out of the flat or out of the actual markings. That's not the way I'm going to want it, but it's not a huge deal. I'm going to go ahead and work on cleaning, cleaning up the rest of it, cleaning off the flats. And you'll notice that overall it actually looks very nice. There's just a couple places there where I'm going to need to fix it. So we're going to do that later. And we're just going to recoat it. Alright, so as you can see, I finished cleaning up, and then I added a little bit more to touch up on the white. I'm going to clean up the red. Now, it's not a bad idea to use a different part of the rag, some fresh CLP. As you can tell, this one I went away from and came back to. So, it's a little more obstinate. And you can see just a little bit of color here bleeding from the red. That's why you want to choose a different part of the rag. Going from the white to the red doesn't seem to matter quite as much, but if you go from the red to the white, you're more likely to get some coloring that'll probably come off as pink in your white markings. I'm going to get in there and get some elbow grease. Now you can tell with this one, since I in the rubbing and then the additional markings on the white that this one's actually coming off much slower that's why it's important not to let this wait too long now as I wrap up the cleaning 
you'll definitely find with some trial and error that the amount of time you wait is one of the biggest factors in using this method. Because if you get the timing right, the paint on the flats will rub out pretty well, pretty easily, but you won't get the paint out from inside. If you wait too long, it's going to be very difficult to get the edges out, especially without enough force to even remove the paint from inside. And once you start doing that, you're going to have to go back and do additional coats, which isn't always fun. So, there's a quick guide to it. This one's going to take a little more elbow grease up on the on the rat especially, and maybe some touch-ups on the white, make it look a little better. I'll show you some additional examples of firearms that I've done. Here's a Spikes lower. Unfortunately not an actual full auto, but it still has the markings, H&K style. Here's another one that I did. This is on my 6.8. It was originally done uh, just to the parkerized receiver. Then after completing that, um, I ended up deciding I wanted to try a firearms coating. I ended up going with Brownell's Alumahide 2 in the Coyote color, which compared to the grip here, you can tell is a pretty good match to the Magpul Flat Dark Earth. So I actually ended up stripping out the markings and then after I completed the alumahide coating and gave it plenty of time to set, I went back and reapplied the markings. There was no issues with the alumahide flaking off while I was applying this. You can see some dings and scratches where some of it has flaked off, but that's from use and not from the actual coating. So there's a number of ways to do the coating. You can do it with uh, automotive paint. I've heard of people using fingernail polish. So this is just one way. What I like about this is the Elmer's painter's pens are not permanent. It's not that difficult to remove it. So if you change your mind and you want to remove it or you want to change the color or you want to add a coating and then apply it after the coating, it's not too bad to actually get the painter's pens out and removed if you need to. You can use some of your harsher paint removing chemicals. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and let me know if there's any ideas you want for the next videos. Thanks.